This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. We found ourselves a familiar face over here in beautiful Cleveland, Ohio. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. How are you? Good. And you are Nick. I'm Nick Lendl. I'm the ring announcer tonight for Welterweight 3. At UC, Premier here in Cleveland, a bunch of other places. You do this. I see you everywhere, I feel like. You just keep popping up everywhere <laughs> doing more and more shows. Yeah, um, mostly in Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. uh, Cleveland. I've been working with Ring of Honor more. I uh, was in New Orleans oh, for okay. WrestleMania weekend, and then we did a loop. Um, Pittsburgh and Columbus last week. So, yeah, getting around more. Uh, excited for Welterweight 3 on, you know, iPay per view. It's a big mm -hmm. deal. Everyone's excited. I like how nonchalant you were about, yeah, I was just down in New Orleans, WrestleMania and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like you said, I, I'm, I'm doing a lot. Um, I like doing, you know, as much as much as I can do. Mm -hmm. um, the more I can do is, is, is better, obviously. Um, it does get a little hectic, but um, I'm just having fun. Everything's the same. I mean, it all just blends together. <laughs> what makes the welterweight show different from all the other shows you've been doing lately? Um, well, obviously, the biggest thing that stands out from uh, the welterweight shows are everybody here is under 185 pounds, mm -hmm. which is a big deal. Uh, obviously, in the last few years, WWE has revamped their cruiserweight division, which is uh, wrestlers under 205 pounds. But a lot of the times when you watch uh, Monday Night Raw, um, SmackDown, even Ring of Honor, a lot of their guys are, you know, not that much bigger than the cruiserweights. Um, I don't want to give anything away here, but Seth Rollins, who's a main eventer on mm -hmm. Monday Night Raw every week, is 217 pounds. Oh, wow. You know, um, Finn Balor, I don't even think, is 200 pounds. You know, and if you watch Raw now, the ring announcer doesn't even announce his weight. They just say where he's from, mm -hmm. and that's it, because... Uh, you know, if I'm not watching wrestling, I don't know anything about wrestling, and I turn on Monday Night Raw, and a guy like Finn Balor is in the ring against um, someone like Tony Nese, who's in the cruiserweight division, who is, uh, I don't, I don't want to, you know, say anything negative, is considered a little lower level than a Seth Rollins position or a mm -hmm. Finn Balor position, no disrespect to anybody, but mm -hmm. if I turn on a show not knowing anything about wrestling and I see Tony Nese one-on-one -on -one with Finn Balor or Seth Rollins, I'm thinking, wow, this is pretty even. You know, yeah. they're about the same size. But if you're a wrestling fan, uh, Tony Nese or whoever comes through the curtain, you're thinking, oh, you know, Seth Rollins is going to destroy him. You know, mm -hmm. so it's nice to have almost, you know, you have the 230, 50 pound guys, and then you go down one step below for the cruiserweights. And it's even cooler now because these are the younger, I don't want to say younger, uh, some of them are younger, uh, even smaller than that, you know, mm -hmm. one level down from that. Because a lot of the guys, uh, 160 pounds, 150 pounds. I think Nate Wings is the smallest guy we have here tonight. He weighed in at 136 pounds. Oh, wow. You know, for someone like that, you know, um, oh, to be no. taken seriously 10 years ago or even five years ago, it just would not happen. So um, with the resurgence of 205 Live and um, this revamped cruiserweight division, the welterweights are, uh, I don't want to say in line with that, it's something different because some of these guys are even smaller than the guys in 205 Live. You know, it's the smallest... Um, first welterweight division I, I've heard of or I, I know of. It's, it, you get to see, the, obviously the ring action is much different. It's, it's more in the air. It's more fast paced. Because mm -hmm. I think when you have a lot of the big guys. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's much slower pace and these are just like bam, bam the whole time. Yeah, and I think a lot of that has to do with um, the way the cruiserweight started in the 90s. Nin 1996, 95-ish, you saw Rey Mysterio come in and obviously Rey Mysterio is smaller than 90% of the people he's facing, probably more than that. So if you see a guy like Kevin Nash, who's a big power guy, Rey Mysterio can't do those moves. So you need something to stand out. So I think that's where it started with the fast pace and the moves off the top rope and out of the ring. And uh, a lot of guys take to that style because they, they feel the same way. You know, I'm smaller, so I need to bring something else to the table. But you'll see tonight, um, you know, a lot of these guys don't feel that way. And they don't, you know, just because I'm 150 pounds doesn't mean that I have to do three flips off the top rope. And, you know, I can wear you down with a submission move just like a 300 pounder. So it's a huge, wide variety of different characters and different um, athletic styles that will all mesh together. It's going to be an awesome show. The first two have been awesome. So excited for the third. I'm excited to see this because I like it. 
I've never seen this live mm -hmm. to see this kind of weight class go up against each other and just mm -hmm. kind of see a little bit crazier things they can do with 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 their bodies and it just even like you said they not having to do like twenty flips but mm -hmm. at the same time you know you can do a little bit more when you're a little bit lighter weight. <laughs> yeah, you can throw your body around more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And maybe you won't feel as bad the next day. Maybe you'll feel worse. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. That's probably worse. Yeah. Because I mean, a lot of times those high risk moves don't pay off. The guy moves. So <laughs> the impact's on you. So how long have you been announcing, if you don't mind me asking? Um, just a little over two years. I started in uh, 2016. Um, Rural Valley in February of 2016 was my first wrestling show I ever announced. I was expecting you to say like decades, just no, because no, no, no. you're just the professionalism and yeah, well, well, yeah, I, yeah, I, I always wanted to be you know a wrestling announcer. Went to college and didn't really know a way in, mm -hmm. and um, I saw online that WWE was having a, you know the first ever tour of their performance center. You would pay and you would go to um, visit the performance mm -hmm. center, and obviously it was for fans. But me um, thinking. Selfishly, I thought, you know what, if I can go in there and just maybe talk to somebody or yeah. let you know. So it turned out that um, a lot of people that were there got to do things. So, um, you know, they had one guy hold up the belt for a championship match and they had one guy as the bell ringer, you know, mm -hmm. and everything. So uh, I asked if I could ring announce, mm -hmm. you know. So um, to me, that was it. You know, doing that was it because I mm -hmm. was in a WWE ring. I got to do it. Um, and following that, I started getting you know, uh, tweets from people that had, mm -hmm. you know, saw the footage or whatever. And then I got in contact with IWC, started working at IWC, and um, from there started doing boxing shows, branched off. I worked at the Monster Factory for a little bit. Um, then I had a tryout with Ring of Honor this past July, and I've been working with them pretty consistently, as, as well as these shows in Cleveland every month with uh, Welterweight and, and Premier. That's very cool. Like I said, it's in your professionalism, you're very, you're very good at this. Like you, you would think this is like second nature for you. And, and, like you've been doing this forever. Um, thank you so much, Nick, for chatting. With Absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank um, you guys. Can we find you on online? Yeah, uh, search for me on Facebook. I don't do the Instagram thing. Um, Twitter, just at Nick Lendl. Um, just my name. It's too much Instagram and all that stuff. <laughs> so I uh, do Facebook. I do Twitter. Other than that. Um, I stay pretty low key. Other than that, because it's it's a lot. You know, every weekend you're somewhere else. It's a lot to keep up with. Actually, now as soon as this interview's over, I have to tweet out a you know promotion for this event. So I haven't done that yet. So I'm sure Dabrowski will get on me for that. So. <laughs> I'll be after you. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.